Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Leaf Leaperson, and today I'm going to be showing you how to kind of change your game, make it look a little cooler, maybe take it from looking like this... to this. Oh my, what? Now I want to preface this by um, shouting out, obviously, I'm sure most of you have seen it, but Leffen's video where he kind of goes over a Q&A of all the new netplay, uh, the new uh, fits released slippy, new and improved. Um, he briefly discusses in that um, video about how you can enhance your game to make it look a little bit cooler like this. But today I'm focusing more on the post-processing um, like filters and shaders you can add to your game to kind of like mix up the visual style. Um, and for a lot of the post-processing uh, filters and stuff we're going to be adding later, it's imperative that this be considered. A lot of the filters don't look as nice if this is way too low. So currently I have mine at the 4K UHD aka 6 times. Alright, so moving on, we're actually going to skip enhancements, or the second folder at least, for now. Generally speaking, this is just a way to add uh, this kind of duality effect, uh, almost like a VHS tape kind of deal or that kind of lo-fi vaporwave look. We'll come back to this one though. It uh, pairs really well with some of these uh, post-processing filters. Okay, one last thing before we shrink this folder and we start looking at these cool shaders. Uh, before you add any of these shaders using this drop-down menu, you're gonna want to change this to on swap. Um, I tried on projection for a while and it didn't mingle very well with the uh, stock icons and percentage it kept giving a little flashing effect and on swap here just kind of gives it an overall cleaner effect um, this display resize shader um, this is just kind of like a little post thing it just kind of generally what it does is add like a secondary effect to each of the shaders you can leave it at default i leave it at this jinc2 sharper uh, just kind of gives a sharper image um, from what I've seen. And then the last thing here, I just have this color boost kind of in the middle here. All this is doing is kind of making your shaders have a little bit more of like punch to them. All right, and before we close our little guy so we can actually start looking at all these filters, just to add them here, you just click on one, like this is called barrel, you add it. Um, you can stack them on top of each other. Barrel doesn't work very well when you stack on top, but you can add like this one underneath it and it just kind of adds, move them up and down. It's kind of like a uh, Photoshop kind of like layers tab. Okay, you already had a little sneak peek, but the first one we have here, we're just going down the list, is called 16-bit. So 16-bit kind of creates this posterize effect. It's really fun and as you can see it is real time. It's not like a filter that was added later. You can play over it, it doesn't affect the quality or frame rate or anything as long as your PC is running at a decent speed. And yeah, one nice thing is you can stack them, like I mentioned earlier, so you can kind of create it to look even more crazy. And moving right along, logically, we have 32 bits. A 32 bit is basically the same thing, but 32 bit instead of 16 bit. Classic. And of course, you can stack it just like the last one, but 32 bit doesn't have quite as a big of a scale. And the next one here is called Barrel. Barrel is really interesting because it creates this, you know, fish eye kind of effect. So the next one is called Depth of Field. Uh, apparently it's supposed to add a depth of field. I haven't seen anything with it. I've tried stacking a lot. I tried using it with other features. It doesn't really seem to affect melee at least that much. Now the next one is one of my favorites, and it's a great filter to be combined with a lot of others. It's called Depth. So Depth really takes out everything and it really makes it more of a silhouette kind of look. As you can see, lasers are invisible, so playing online is pretty intense. And even though I have the stock counts turned off right now, even if I turn it back on, Depth would not allow them to be showed. And of course later I will show you how you can combine this with other guys to make it look really cool. Okay, so I'm actually turning back the window for this next one because it's called Dolphin FX. And so this one, you're gonna see it have a little bit of effect just because it naturally adds stuff. But this guy is more about, it's like a general like 
filter editing hub kind of deal. Okay, so I got it working to where you can see it here. Um, so this guy, you can go through all of these different sections and add each one. Like I mentioned, I'm not going to be going through each one of these just because this is kind of a jack of all trades one and there's a lot to go over. Um, but this one uh, is a specific thing I want to highlight. It's called cell shading. It kind of creates this cell shading effect. And so you can kind of create a Borderlands-esque art style for melee. But yeah, it has stuff like scan lines that you can add to your video. Okay, so right underneath Dolphin FX is one called FX or double A. I don't really know what it does. This is it applied. Doesn't seem to really do anything. The next one's called HQR resampling. Um, I also don't know what it does really. Okay, and now we're getting into some more useful ones. So underneath that one we have the Ishiruka FX. This one creates kind of a enhancement to colors, kind of like adding a little bit more vibrance. So this is it with it on, this is it without. So it just kind of generally creates a more clear picture. And underneath it is something even more useful. It's the same thing, Ishiruka FX, but it has a hyphen light. So this one has even more of an effect. So here is it with it on. Here's it with it off, and back on. Okay, so I got this guy pulled up again because we are actually going to be skipping the next four. I will be doing it later, so don't worry. But these are four that I cannot run Streamlabs and also have it at the highest enhancement. So we're gonna come back to it. Okay, so we skipped those four. So right underneath the SSGI, we have Super Depth 3D, and this is what it does. I'm assuming this would be used for maybe some kind of VR experience? I'm not quite sure. And there's actually a way to do that um, using the second enhancements tab. If you go over to here and you click side by side, it does it as well, but it doesn't have the black box in the middle. So I don't know, that's just kind of something I've noticed. Okay, so right underneath Super Depth 3D, we have Acid Metal. Now this is one of many that just create a creative color. <laughs> Great, like kind of a color palette. I haven't really found anything useful for this. It's kind of ugly, but you know, that's that's just what it is. Alrighty, and underneath that guy, we have one called Acid Trip. And uh, it speaks for itself. This is what it does. <laughs> it's uh, pretty ugly. If you stack it on top of each other, it looks even crazier. And of course, underneath that, we have Acid Trip 2. This one looks like this. It looks bad, but maybe it will have a great combination with other filters. Moving right along, we have one called Adaptive Sharpen. So this one slows down my game quite a bit. I can't really see any. I can't really see anything anyway, so... Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Adaptive Sharpen. I haven't seen it really do anything that beneficial except for slow down my computer. <laughs> Alright, so the next one underneath that one is called Auto underscore Tune, and that's what it does. And so this one kind of does the cell shading for you. Um, it's kind of like a preset, because that Dolphin FX one that we talked about earlier had that kind of cell shading option, but this one does it for you. Um, looks decent. It looks a lot better on brighter stages. When you The farther you zoom out, it just kind of looks gross. Um, if you compile them on top of each other, it looks even more gross, but yeah, that's just kind of how this looks. Right underneath that is auto-tune number two. This one, yeah, it does a lot of crazy shit. It's just kind of like wonky. And adding another one on top of it actually makes it look cooler, in my opinion. Pretty, uh, pretty decent effect. Uh, the auto-tune two and with two stacked on top of each other. Alright, so the next one is called Bad Underscore Bloom. And yeah, it's a bad bloom. <laughs> not, not much else to really say about that one. Underneath that one, we have a very useful one for uh, adding on top of other filters. It's called Brighten. Obviously by itself, looks like trash. But some filters make it kind of naturally darker, so having this shader to add on top of it is actually really handy. Underneath the Brighton, we have one called Christmas, and it just makes it green and red. 
Moving on, cool number one. So you'll see a lot of these are just kind of like color palette swap. Underneath cool number one, we have another very useful uh, filter, darker, brighter. And it just kind of really heightens up the contrast. It works pretty well with a few filters that I've discovered. Next one, we have emboss. Emboss is also a very nice filter to pair with others, but on its own, it looks kind of wonky. And the next guy, we have fire, it just makes it red. Got under that, fire too, a different kind of red. And then fire, water, blue and red. <laughs> yeah, there's a few in a row that are kind of gross. Grayscale, useful, but not great on its own, just makes it gray. There's a second grade school, or grayscale, kind of the same thing. And then invert, which I've actually found a lot of use in, but on its own, it obviously looks crazy and not very appealing. And there's also an invert blue underneath it, which inverts everything and makes it blue for some reason. And then underneath that, we have one called inverted outline. It kind of creates like what the acid metal one looks like. And then underneath that one, we have one called Mad Underscore World, which makes it look like Mad World for the Wii, kind of. So yes, we just added one called Motion Blur, which is right underneath it. If you go to Options here, you can change the intensity. Um, this Motion Blur doesn't look as good as like using a Motion Blur, like After Effects kind of thing. It just makes everything look kind of hazy and like a cheap motion blur, so I don't usually use it. Okay, moving on, underneath it's called Night Vision. Yeah, it's just a preset. Looks kinda goofy. So underneath Night Vision, we have one called Night Vision 2. Uh, this is one that I can't really get to work on this uh, resolution. I think if you had it at a lower resolution, it would work better, but yeah, this is just kinda funny. So underneath Night Vision 2, we of course have Night Vision with scan lines. Kind of the same thing, I think you had to make it a smaller resolution for that one to work. So underneath that we have of course Posterize. Posterize kind of does what 16-bit does but worse in my opinion. Then there's a Posterize 2 which goes like that and looks really bad and I haven't really found much use for it so far. So underneath that we have Primary Colors. This uh, makes everything red, blue, purple, green and looks crazy, especially on Battlefield. Okay, and a great, great filter for using with other guys, not necessarily by itself, is sepia. It's underneath the uh, primary colors. And the next one we got, Sketchy. Sketchy is one of the best preset filters. It looks really good. It keeps the particles, which is something that depth doesn't really do. That was the one earlier that really made it like a silhouette. But this one is really sick. It really allows you to combine with a lot of other ones too. But it just looks great. And uh, if we turn back the stock icons, it, it works well with the stock icons. So it kind of keeps it... Uh, I don't have any timer on, but the timer is also kind of in the sketchy style. But a lot of other uh, filters don't work very well with the stock... Um, percentage and everything. We have spooky number one, which is a very useful, not really, it just does this. <laughs> underneath that one we have spooky number two, underneath that we have sunset, which I don't know, is supposed to kind of make it look like a sunset, but yeah, it might work better on like a brighter stage. The next one we have swap RGB with BGR, that's what it does. Then we have Swap RGB with BRG, and it does the same thing basically, but just different. <laughs> and then we have Swap RGB with GBR, these all do kind of the same thing, but they just kind of go like that, Swap RGB with GRB, and it makes it look like this. And then we have Swap RGB with RBG. And the last one is just called Toxic, and it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't really do anything. This guy here, this M-A-T-S-O-D-O-F, is really computer intensive, probably the most out of all the filters. So here we go, we're adding it here. So what this guy does is it creates a blur. Very simply like put, it creates a blur. With our blur radius all the way up and this going down, 
you can see it start to have this kind of blur effect. Like you can do really cool things like this and now it's like an interesting effect over everything. So these three are very interesting. Um, so we'll just start with the first one. This is SSAO. And then whenever you apply it, it creates this. Click ambient only. That's what will bring it to this kind of like black and white shading kind of thing. If you don't have it click, it actually adds you, what you see here. It'll add it on top of something without creating to go black and white. So if you want like a little bit more depth or shade or something, that's kind of like what this is for. So this is the best kind of guy here, this sample range slider, it can make it to where it looks like really low tech kind of like super hot kind of graphics. And then if you do it this way, it can almost create a like sketchy kind of look. But I know that there's so much potential, this is just kind of unexplored territory at this point. All right, so moving on, we have SSAO2. It's gonna be a similar thing except for slightly different. <laughs> uh, so again, this is what it's adding whenever you have it selected normally. So we're gonna keep this ambient only so this can kind of like almost invert it. But yeah, if you have a very intensive computer, this is one of the filters that works way better if you have your quality turned up higher. So this could actually start looking pretty good, and it doesn't look that bad, it looks pretty unique. But this is a filter that looks way better the higher your resolution is set to. So the next one we have here is SSGI. This is the one that I've been playing with the most, and this is kind of a similar thing. It's like the ambient only. So this you can raise the sharpness. This is one that looks really good whenever the re resolution's really high. So I have everything kind of turned up to the max here because otherwise it's just a little too like, you know, dark. But as you can see here, it really adds an interesting effect on like Battlefield. So playing with this and everything, you can, you know, get it to look pretty cool, but with the re resolution this low, it doesn't look super great, but I just can't personally turn up the resolution that much higher. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some combinations that I personally use and I think that work very well together. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back to 4K um, just so that whenever I add my favorite kind of filters together, it looks pretty good. So we're adding depth. So this is the one that creates that silhouette look. And we're simply going to go down and add the sepia. So this is one that I love using I think it just looks so cool. It's really fun to use online and it's like a fun challenge. So we're gonna go ahead and remove sepia and we're gonna go back to the second guy here with enhancements again. And we're gonna turn on the shader. So you click this drop down. Unfortunately, it doesn't show drop downs for some reason. We're gonna click shader and this will bring us back to this kind of look. Uh, this like VHS kind of duality look where it creates the blue and red combination. So here's one of my favorites. It's combining sketchy, depth, and this shader. And this creates this effect. And of course you can remove the shader. So it just creates this little layout guy. Whenever you zoom out farther, uh, one thing that's kind of crappy is whenever you zoom out, Falco kind of gets lost. I mean, every character gets lost like in the platforms and everything. So this one's like pretty, pretty difficult to play on. One thing I will say is every anytime you have depth on, let's just go back to the main menu here. This is what it looks like. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show off here was using depth on different stages. I think it looks super good on some of these stages that have like a background here. But whenever you zoom out, it gets a little it gets a little hard to see. So if we want, we can do invert, so it's now dark. But whoops. But we kind of run into a similar situation where 
whenever you zoom out so far, it just looks a little like that. But now we can try with the invert on the depth, we can add the brighten. And so now it looks pretty playable from this distance. At least I think so. And it still retains that interesting quality about it. But yeah, it's much more playable. We could try adding another brighten. And wow, look at that. I think that looks so good. But you zoom in, it has the same issue. So this is just kind of something that you can play around with. So this one is just simply sketchy plus a few darker brighters. Sepia. And another darker brighter. <laughs> so here's the combination for it. Here's the order. The order is important to have because it's kind of like the layers and filters and everything. But yeah, this is one that I think looks really great. Probably the best looking uh, filter combination in my opinion, at least in terms of like showing effects and everything still. And uh, just playing around here, I just added the invert uh, guy to it. And wow, does this look cool or not? <laughs> I feel like I keep saying wow, but like, oh, this looks so beautiful, especially on FD. So yeah, I like using widescreen whenever I'm in this kind of state. And like I mentioned, Leffen describes uh, how to use widescreen. But one thing I will say while using these visual um, shaders is you're probably going to want to turn off screen shake. At least it helps me. So if you go over here, you right click your um, game here, properties, the gecko codes, disable screen shake. It's right underneath the widescreen. And I also do the center align, the HUD. And unfortunately it looks like the, the Melee 20XX thing for like recording, you can't disable screen shake, at least not through the properties that I've shown here. So if you do know how to do that, let us know in the comments. And one more thing I forgot to mention, the whole reason why I really got into all these like filters and everything is I was messing around with Clippy which is, as you may know, a combo sorter for all the Slippy VODs that are kind of automatically saved um, whenever you're using Slippy for your like matches. And so I wanted to kind of create like the best looking melee like in post so I don't have to necessarily make my computer struggle as I'm playing like either a serious match or just playing around and not wanting any lag online. So if you have a computer that kind of struggles or you don't necessarily want to play where it looks like this, you can go ahead and just apply this to your dolphin and everything whenever you're playing back all of your slippy recordings so it's something that you can just kind of have for fun maybe even for a combo video but not necessarily have to play it while you're watching it the next video i'm kind of working on is using these cool filters along with streamlabs to kind of color key and overlay them on top of footage of whatever or your face <laughs> and you're kind of like playing on a stage that's on your face or something uh, just like some really fun like ways to play melee and show like melee. Another project I'm working on that are, that's kind of utilizing these filters is my Charlie Walk world record. I did it for Yoshi's Story a while back and now I want to do it for Battlefield and kind of work my way up to finally f finishing on FD. So if you want to follow me at twitch.tv forward slash leaperson, that's kind of where I'm going to be doing that. Um, going to set up a, a schedule soon so we'll kind of see how that goes.